Hey y'all, welcome back to the Smith Family Ranch. We wanted to go over why we used weed killer on our pasture. So if you've been following us for a little bit, you know that we've been following J Greg Judy's method Greg Judy's method um, to the best that we can. We don't have the luxury of having mass pasture like he does um, to where we can let the pasture rest for months and months and months <clears throat> after uh, wheeling out hay, uh, hay bales. We don't have the luxury of um, really not having we have to use our pastures, basically what I'm trying to say. And so it's what we did this year, all winter long, for the most part, for about 75% of the winter time, is we were rolling out hay bales. Um, you can see right there is a hay bale that was rolled out. And right there you can tell, no, yeah, there's no hay bale rolled out right there. <laughs> um, one of the things that we decided to do this year was to call out the local feed company and put out weed killer a couple different reasons and i know that greg judy doesn't use this um, we felt it was best for our property though for the main reason of <clears throat> when this bahia grass seeds all these are seeds when this seeds i wanted to at least bare soil that you can see back in here right there i didn't want any weeds there I want when this comes to, to seed that the seeds hopefully will blow or the cows will come in and move the seed over <clears throat> and it'll seed there if it was full of weeds weeds can actually choke out grass um, if it's not controlled um, so that's why we put down fertilizer and we put down weed killer um, was for that reason it wasn't a spray weed killer, so it wasn't Roundup that causes cancer. All, none of that. It was a pelletized weed, um, weed control, and weed killer. And we have a mixture of Bahia and Bermuda. And Bermuda grows like a weed. I mean, essentially, it is a weed. It's just a pretty weed. Um, <laughs> and <clears throat> so if we have bare soil, plus between the Bahia coming in from... Uh, seed right now and this allows the bermuda not to get choked out by re <clears throat> by the weeds that's why we made the decision to go ahead and put some weed killer down um it was a tough decision honestly it's not the one that we really wanted to do but we felt that two two years ago when we got um army our pasture worms. eaten up by uh army worms it did a number of more on our property than what i think we figured that it did at the time. And so we've been trying to bring it back to life and we're learning Greg Judy's method. Um, later on this summer, we hope to go and buy his, uh, his trailer that will help us more easily. Uh, and precise. And, and more precisely, yes. Take the hay bales and move them out. Um, and so hopefully with the weeds more under control this year, um, we're hoping that that will help everything around here. They couldn't get 100% because of our land, the way that it's laid out, and this stupid wannabe pond that we have. Mm. <clears throat> you can't see it, I don't think, but it's down in there. Um, so that's why we did Weed Killer. I know we got a lot of comments saying, Greg Judy doesn't use Weed Killer. I know he doesn't. Um, we just felt for our property at this particular stage in the summertime or in the springtime that we wanted to get ahead of it early so we don't have to do multiple applications of it. We also wanted to make sure that the weeds were dead by the time Bermuda and Bahia started coming in really strong uh, by mid-May and growing in quick. And then that way, hopefully when they come in, then we won't have as many weeds and then of course we're going to continue with the greg judy method this winter too on spreading out more hay bales and hopefully clearing in right here 
Um, there's plenty more where the <clears> cows <throat> are now up here. Um, and we're rotationally grazing them. We are doing a little bit quicker rotational grazing than we did last year. Um, we're running them through real quick. Um, and the good thing is from everything that I'm reading too is that when they eat these seeds from uh, the bahia grass, because it's coming into seed right now, uh, that'll filter through into their poop. And then they'll plant it onto the ground. Um, so yes, we will continue on with the Greg Judy method. Um, and I know we had some questions about that. That's why we wanted to kind of go over this, um, explain what we did. We also put lime down, try to get our pH level up on our soil. It was a little low. Um, so we put lime out too. I know Greg Judy doesn't do that either. Um, but we went ahead and did it anyways to help our pH on our soil come up. Um, and we'll take you through some of our areas of our pasture. So maybe you'll understand, maybe you won't, but at the end of the day, we did what we, we felt was best for our property. Um, I know most of y'all might not agree, but we already did it. Um, it's our money that went to it. Uh, it's what we felt was necessary. It was the best weed killer that we could buy that wasn't uh, very chemically. Uh, I don't know the exact brand or name. I'd have to go back to the feed store and ask. But when we ask, we, when we were asking questions on what to put down, told them we didn't want Roundup, which Roundup kills grass too. So it definitely wouldn't have been any Roundup in there. Mm -hmm. um, but we just wanted to make sure that it was best for us and what our concerns were on chemicals. We'll take you around to some of our properties so that you can see kind of what we've been fighting. Um, maybe you'll get a better understanding, but if not, you can go ahead and keep killing us in the comments. You can see here that there was weeds here. Um, and then hopefully when the cows come, they'll bear this up and get a bunch of the uh, old weeds. But this is some Bermuda that's coming in and hopefully it'll spread out. And then right next to it, you have some seeding from a hay bale was right here. You can actually see the circle. <laughs> I don't know, you might not be able to on camera. But a hay bale sat right here in a hay ring. And you can see how nice and thick it got. And so right here next to it, you can see bear. This is all this was all weeds. Um this so, is what was there yes. before the hay bale. Yeah. The one thing we have learned about the Greg Judy method, especially out here in Texas, is that the earlier in the fall that we rolled out hay, the quicker in the spring it came up. So the hay bales that we rolled out late in the winter did not come up as quick as the hay that we did early on in the winter, the very first couple hay bales. And I'll show you those examples here. So you'll see some uh, Bermuda coming in. Bermuda hasn't hit the height of growing because Bermuda really needs about 60 degrees consistent temperature and above. We've had a couple down in the 30s in April, which is kind of rare. Um, but even like waking up this morning, it was in the 50s. So it doesn't give it its optimal growth when it's not above 60 consistent, even at night. But you can see here that this was all weeds coming through here. The weeds are died, have died now. But the hope is, is that <clears throat> the Bermuda, it'll give the ch a chance for the Bermuda to expand. It'll give a chance for the Bahia to seed and the cows to digest and move that. The cows to disrupt all the, um, all the seeds that are on the plants already, knock them off and get thicker. But again, this is just more example of why we did actual weed killer. It's kind of more to speed up the process, I guess. Um, sure, we could have not have done it, but then my worry was is that um, one, it would slow down our rotational grazing because I really wanted to get our pasture up and going for our cows um, and make sure that they had the best grass possible as quickly as possible because um, I believe in happy cows. this is but the weed killer did not work on these see these are all seeds all those are seeds and that's what we were trying to prevent um, 
was getting the weeds to seeds. But this weed doesn't grow very tall. Um, but is what it does is it smothers out, smothers all the rest of uh, the grass around it. So, and you can see here, um, right here was a hay bale. You can barely see some grass. Oh yeah. This is one of the last few ones that we rolled out here. It was right along here. Mm -hmm. You can see where some of it grew up, but not all of it. Yeah. And then if you come up this way, you can see all the tall grass is where we laid out hay bales. So you can see a row of it all the way over here by the tree, came around the tree. All this is where we rolled out hay bales. Last year, this was all 100% weeds. There wasn't a blade of grass that grew here all summer long last year. It was all this, it was all some of these weeds, but all the weeds have died off, which is nice. Except for that one. Yeah, except for that one. It just didn't work for that, which is fine, at least for now. Um, but if you could see it in here last year. Let me, guys, let me show you guys exactly what we're dealing with here. So we got these weeds. You see, I've been mowing all that. We'll get these weeds here. I believe this is a goat weed. I'm not sure. That's what I've been told at least. But then these weeds you get too. You see how tall they get. You see how tall they get compared to the tractor. I mean, they get tall and thick. But then I get some good patches of grass. See, all this is nice good grass for them to eat right here. But then, boom, more weeds. Good grass, weeds. And most of the pasture is like that. Weeds. It was bad last year. Like, like I said, we didn't even get a blade of grass. And pretty much from that gate on, which is good five acres. I mean, that's how much we really needed to get this going and make sure that it was done quickly because that's five acres of grazing that our cows need um so we don't have to put out hay bales yeah yeah so let's go look at our cows and you'll see how happy they are here's our happy cows <laughs> look she's got great grass hanging from her yeah. mouth Quiet cows are happy cows. And they are nice and quiet <laughs> and fat. All boys got it too. Yeah. He's saving it for later. But she is due here very soon. I think three is too. Yeah, three and four are due. It's pretty quick, hopefully. But we're letting them kind of overgraze back here. This is where the weeds were the most. So I'm letting them get the grass down early. Normally we start at the front, which we did for a couple weeks. And then we came all the way back here first. We're letting them overgraze a little bit so that again, more sun, more uh, water and more nutrients. We'll hit this stuff first, hopefully allow all this to spread. And then next year we won't have any weeds hopefully. Um, but yeah, you can see how happy they are. They all have grass hanging from their mouth. <laughs> all right, so this field behind us, uh, I had torn this field up this side right here. Um, when we first moved here, I, I disked, disked it up and I put some rye grass down um, and it never ever came back. But this year we put down like five or six hay bales right in here, all in a row. Look how nice and lush this is. This is what we're aiming for um, eventually, and we'll get there. It's just a matter of time. And if we got to put more weed killer down, I hate to say it, but we'll probably do it again. I mean, if, if need be. If not, I'd rather not, but I'm also going to try to do it. We feel is best for us, um, for the cows. So um, we rely on 
grazing throughout the summer to save us money from hay bales during the winter time. And so we have, you know, our main herd is here. We have a bachelor pad on the other side where all the boys are. And then we have uh, two milking cows and one heifer that we're selling um, around in our front yard area. So we're pretty maxed out on where we can go, which is why the weed killer we felt was pretty essential to us this year. It's nothing that we really wanted to do, but one for finances and two, just we try to do everything as best as we can natural, but that's what we did this year. And we'll keep you updated and see if it paid off. And if not, we'll be glad to admit it didn't work out. And so far it looks like it is though. Um, but other than that, thanks for watching. Hope you guys understand. Um, and uh, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Or if not, thumbs down. Either way, let us know how you feel. No hurt feelings here. Um, but thanks for watching. Talk to you later.